Hey animators, I'm gonna say this off the bat. You guys are dark audience. Again, out of all the suggestions that I've listed in the voting poll, I get stabbing. <laughs> I mean, that's what we're doing. We got the software open. I mean, I, I do what you guys vote, but still, like, there's a lot of other options as well. It's not even rocket science. So we are quarantined due to the virus, and honestly, that's great, because I got time to make YouTube videos. They don't have that luxury before. I guess that's pretty much all. Before we start though, I want to ask you to hit the bell, because I don't have an upload schedule, and getting a notification can come in handy sometimes, especially now with the Builder collab going on. You might want to join. It's fun. A lot of fun. Also, I can tell the video quality is probably super bad, because I'm back at home, and I gotta improvise with the setup and stuff. Like, the ring light doesn't even have a stand, it's just like lying on the keyboard and the screen. Eesh. Sure hope my audio sounds good though. I'm still hyped about that. Okay, let's begin. You know, usually animation takes a lot of time, and tutorials are better to be short because Oh, I can learn all this in only five minutes, let's watch it right away! I gotta rush, is what I'm gonna say, so don't expect good results, especially not with something delicate such as a stabbing animation. Actually, I wanna stand up and act it out. I need some help. Okay, I got a rough idea on what I'm gonna do. Wait, that was the right leg? Yes. We've got the murder in the folder. I just like the goofy meme. We're gonna turn him around and make him step forward. Actually, we're gonna do it on the folder. The folder's gotta have the most motion. Turn him around, forwards, maybe on the side a little bit. And this leg is, of course, gonna be synced to the floor when that happens. I don't know why watching these tutorials is meant to be interesting. It's just some random guy moving people's body parts in a software. Animating is usually boring as hell. It's the end result that matters. The other leg is gonna step forwards, maybe lift it up. That's cheating, by the way, but it works. We're gonna move the Steve down, like, we're gonna move the character down, so the folder is only moving horizontally, and the vertical motion is being handled by the character. Vertical motion is gonna have an ease, actually ease in and out. Of course, this could have a stronger ease in, because the guy is going in for a murder, you wanna, you wanna emphasize that. And maybe this whole thing, up till here, could have a really strong ease in, and then maybe an ease out. Looks like he, want, he went for the jump start, you know, like, drop down a little bit so he can have a faster start. Details. Details matter. Up to this point, he should already be stabbing the guy, so tempo is usually very important when it comes to animation. So when you go for stabbing, the guy's probably nervous in a dark alley, doesn't want to be spotted, I mean, he wants to get it done fast, and this whole thing needs to happen relatively fast, so like, this is where the stabs happen. This leg here could be raised up a little bit more. So at this point, okay, let's see, the character is gonna be turned around. Wait, no, that's the, that's for the folder. Stupid, stupid. This leg is now gonna be fully extended backwards because that's the, that's the end of the step. This, we obviously want to sync that motion, so he's always going to be on the same spot. Let's not go for micro details, because again, I want to get it done today. Actually, let's make this faster a little bit. Actually, it's not a problem, just bend the legs. I want him to be at this height, because I want the leg to be bent, so we can have stability as you went for the stab. I want him to be stable. Doesn't sound as good, you gotta write it down if you want it to be good. Adjust the other leg. Now, I got the height that I want, so I want both of my legs to be touching the floor. As needed, adjust them again, because you obviously want him to be on the same place. Oof, that was a bit too much. And in between, this leg is just going to bend a little bit, you know? Try to get it on the same point as well. And of course, this leg here should probably be more bent because it's gonna drop down. So, and this is gonna be an ease in, this is gonna be an ease out. So let's see. Okay, I guess it's a bit too fast. Let's move this out of the way a little bit. And this leg here doesn't seem too stable. So let's probably just extend it a little bit. Now the body here could go down and then up with an ease in and out. Just adding some complexity and I think we're supposed to hide the leg motion here because it doesn't look too solid. We're gonna fix what's happening on here with complex upper body motion. I want him to make like a rounded turn and then stab him in because that's what you would do. I'm sorry microphone, I didn't mean to do that. I love you, no homo. Okay, let's try to do all this now. I gotta stand up again. I think I know how to do this. So the body's gonna have some overlapping action. It's gonna go away, slightly, bent, but it's still gonna be bent forward because he wants the balance and the speed and whatnot. So the central point of gravity is still above the contact point with the floor. Physics are correct. Maybe he could go back a little bit more though. And the head is going to fix the instability problem. Hmm. 
How would you do this? Goes way forwards, upwards, and I think it would just go turn like this. Yeah, because he needs a lot of force to pierce the guy. I think this could be a little bit faster with an ease in back. But I do think he needs to go up a little bit more. I'll, I'll do that afterwards. I'll do that afterwards. Like, for an example, I want this leg to be really bent at this point and this guy going down. The other leg being bent enough so he can take the step. Hey, that's not that bad. I think he would want this leg to already be standing there. This, this. Having a solid contact point. This feels a lot more solid now, except this leg is now sliding-ish. Okay. That feels okay. It feels good enough for a tutorial. Look at your target. Uh, maybe ease out even. <laughs> what is this anime BS? Okay, <laughs> that'll do. Let me stand up again. Standing up, acting out the motion really helps you understand what you're doing and where to put what body part and what they do. I was mostly focused on the body when I stood up the last time. Now I'm gonna try to see what the arms do. Okay, so this arm, the one with the knife, is gonna go backwards like this, and it's going to get bent, and it's gonna be turned outwards. I want this knife to turn around, switch it so it's up front, not at the back anymore. I might even have to do an ease in and out backwards. That doesn't even look bad, okay? And now as he comes back around, he's got the knife here, and I don't want him to be extending his arm because he still needs a lot of stability to do that. He's just gonna keep it like this. Now the knife is simply gonna do this, Maybe turn around slightly sideways. Oh no, that's hard. Is what she said. Eh! No, it's hard to make the turn because you lose one rotation axis by rotating another. That's annoying as hell. Don't know why that happens. Sword turns around and now just flatten this out. I know it looks awkward <laughs> on a Minecraft character. Maybe I could position it down. Now it feels like a hidden blade, you know, but it does feel good. It is a nice stabbing motion. The other arm is just going out for support like this. And then it's going to grab the person by the shoulder. You're gonna grab by the shoulder and you're gonna stab him with the other arm. That's what I'm gonna do. That's the motion I'm going for. So like this. So now what we need to do is match this motion. Actually, I could just move the victim closer. We gotta animate both of them and make them interact. That's the difficult part. And it's taking a lot of time and I gotta improvise and my time is running out. It's stressful. Shut up, stupid phone. No one likes you. We could just animate the victim separately and then once the motion is done, move all his keyframes closer. Up until this point, he would just go back, make a backward step, basically. And of course, sink the legs. Don't make the legs slide. It's disgusting and nobody likes to see it. So put in some effort and make it worth watching. Make it worth my time. Make it an intense transition. Like, huh? what I'm going to do with this guy, make him close in. So he starts like this. He gets bent forwards, he gets bent way backwards, and then back forwards. So I'm just gonna make all of this ease in. So yeah, that's the character motion. He wobbles a little bit, so we give him more complexity and realism as far as that goes. Now you should obviously adjust the legs as that's, as that, as that's happening, but I won't do that because it's a tutorial. I'm here for the stab. If I were to make a tutorial for every single possible motion that is possible, I could could literally have enough work for a lifetime. The point is to understand what you're doing, not learn how to do everything individually. Just use common sense, I'm not gonna explain everything. If you were to be in this situation, you know how you'd react. Just go slowly through the motion and feel how you'd react. You usually bend your body down, lift your arms because you're ready for something. You wanna block yourself from that attack. This is where the murderer already grabs him, so this arm here is already holding on to him. So we're gonna take that into consideration as well. For example, He's trying to bend away from the whole thing, which is actually giving the murderer a chance to grab him by the shoulder. It makes sense both from the perspective of the victim as well as the murderer. Uh, I feel like this step should be way bigger, like way bigger. Yep, that feels natural. Plus the tempo, it's not super slow and unrealistic. It actually feels like a legitimate motion. Don't be afraid to make fast moves. You get the stab. And at this point, huh, I got an idea what I'm gonna do with this, hold on. This arm is quicker to react, but doesn't get as high of a position as the other arm does. <laughs> Maybe move it back a little bit. Okay, I guess that'll do. This is supposed to be holding him already. So at this point, he should be holding the shoulder. Select all the keyframes from the victim, move him close enough to make that possible. Because now they're actually interacting. 
When this happens, we have to make the murderer adjust this arm. So now he's actually holding his shoulder. Actually, we could adjust this already. And now, ugh. So he actually grabs a hold of him. And now as the victim goes up, this right arm right here could be out of the way a little bit, maybe bended. And now as this happens, we could show that he actually pushed his arm out of the way, like this. And this first motion could be a really intense ease in. Now it actually does feel like an attack. However, this victim shouldn't go back, but rather maybe back down. And by this point, the leg should extend a little bit. Yes. Oh boy, I am losing daylight. Expect green screen glitching. So the victim could now already prepare himself for the attack, like this, already bending down the body. So this could be an ease in, and this could be an ease out. Now, the murder, murderer, awkward, could go forwards a little bit, and this could just go up like this. So now it is on the same place, almost. This could be a stronger ease out, so like, huh. oh, and this leg also needs to be an ease out, yeah, so like, huh. and this other leg will just try to follow the, I mean, the same point. Also, maybe his entire arm could be brought downwards, because now the victim can do a tiny bounce, maybe. With the knees out and the knees in, basically, uh. and what happens here is basically gets really bent down because the guy got stabbed. What? <laughs> Forwards, and maybe lift it up a little bit. Not too much though, because he is still like stabbed. He could be more dependent now, like leaning down. But it needs to be lower than before. So if he was like this before, this is the new state. Maybe not as much in that direction though. Maybe though, he could just be looking up for a little while. Like, ugh. Now the legs, we gotta do the legs. Like this. Okay, hear me out. I kinda got in the zone now. Since he is now standing on that leg, he has no balance and the body's slowly gonna start moving forward, falling over. So until this point, the body's just gonna rotate inwards, maybe move backwards a little bit. And this leg is now supporting it all. And of course, in. This leg is supposed to be supporting it, so sink this leg to the ground with the same transition and this leg can now catch him. There's a lot of things to consider here. Like when this leg goes up, it can be bent like this, like... <laughs> so he makes those tiny steps catching himself and making the balance and things all realistic. See, I've actually taken time for this. I'm trying not to rush. I'm trying to actually fit in all the details. Now, of course, it would make sense to obviously add some blood splatter effects. I have a blood splatter tutorial as well as a particle tutorial if you want to watch those. I won't explain how that works again. Okay, so now as he stabs him, there's actually a blood splatter thing happening. I sure hope I have all this recorded. I'm not used to OBS. Yes, uh, blood splatter can be invisible for now, not to disturb us. Ah, not spawn particles. Perfect. Now let's focus on the murderer. So this leg here is just gonna drop down a little bit. This guy's gonna also drop down. And it's gonna be an ease in. And this is gonna be a stronger ease in. And of course this leg here is going to be also an ease in. So it matches with the... Maybe even move this backwards a little bit. So he is on the same place again, like... And then of course, this entire motion has ended with an ease in. You want to somewhat stop the motion. So as this would happen, same with the other guy. I haven't done that for the other guy yet. Make him go back a little more, sink the legs, and give it an ease out. So the motion actually comes to a stop. This is the stabbing that I'm talking about. For example, let's move the body a little bit more. Give this a strong ease out, like... And of course, the body parts should be overlapped, obviously. Maybe he just wants to look away, and then as he goes down, he's trying to focus his attention on him a little bit more, like, shh, it's okay. Depends on his personality. You know how your character behaves and how he thinks, and you know how he should react in certain scenarios. In my case, it's gonna be like, like, Hur! and then he's slowly just gonna look down at him. What matters most is you continue every motion you start. For example, if he is on one leg, he's slowly going to lose balance falling on the other leg until he puts the leg back. When he does that, he needs to stop that motion. And when he when he does that, he's probably gonna stand more on the other leg, which means he's gonna fall down onto the other leg, and he's just gonna wobble a little bit till he stabilizes himself. That is for legs. Now I got the body, the arms, and how they interact, and overlapping action. And if he moves his one arm, the body is 
obviously going to support the motion of the arm. You can't do this and expect good results. So there is a lot of thought when it comes to these things. Maybe you could go back and bend it a little bit more because there is resistance when he's trying to pierce him. I want the blade to be at the same angle that it was before. I want him to keep on holding the blade inside him and then slowly, eventually, he would do this. At first, he would just go back like this, move the arm back, move that back forwards, and do it like this, so like... <sighs> of course, body needs to cooperate when it comes to that, this... I'm not gonna animate the other guy anymore, you get the point. I think I'm almost done with this right now. Like... <sighs> Obviously, he should never be still, but at this point, maybe he leans forward on this one leg. I'm being super scrubby right now, I'm just trying to make a point. What if he just does this and slowly collects his corpse, you know? Takes his other arm and just grabs it like this and then carries it out. I'm not going to finish this because it's obviously taken way too long. But you have the basic stab thing done, and how this guy would react, and the stab. I'm overall pretty satisfied with the way it turned out. That is mostly it. If you like this video and want to see more tutorials like this, I recommend you hit the like button, because it does help out the channel a lot. Also, if you want to suggest your tutorials and what you want to see on my channel, join my Discord server. It's completely free. You get to suggest and vote for your content, share your ideas, get feedback from other people. It's a fun place to hang out. Now, before I go, I do want to give a spotlight to some of the amazing fan art that I got on my Discord server as well. I got the idea from Frizzle the Pork and I think it makes sense that I acknowledge the fan art that I've got. Thank you guys, I do appreciate these, they're amazing. If you want to share your fan art, again, join the Discord server, it's all there. Now thank you for watching, I hope you enjoy and I hope you've learned a thing or two. Now what can I say except we'll see you in the next video. Stay sharp.